the afternoon what it is. I flew out yesterday. I have had a beer from every brewery <laughs> in Spokane. It's Spokane to me. I heard it's something different to you all. Uh, so my name is Blake Sanders. I am a mayor, a landscape architect. I'm a, I'm a bunch of things, and we'll talk about that, but there are two things I am not. I am of no kin to Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and I am of no kin to Bernie Sanders. I have my own unique identity. Uh, and so all of you, when I leave here, you can say that the skinny guy with the mustache, you learned one thing. And I don't know what that one thing will be for you yet, but that's the goal of today, is that you get one idea, one thing that I've done in a small town, and you take it back and you implement it. So I'm here because I love small towns. I love the city of Easley. That's where I'm the planning director at. I love the town of West Belver. That's where I'm the mayor at. But I'm also a husband. I'm a father. I'm a professor at Clemson University. So I'm, I'm absolutely all over the place. I don't sleep, which is good for taking red eye flights back and forth to the West Coast uh, to, to speak. I am a huge Clemson Tiger fan. We are excited. We've won two national championships in my lifetime now. That's a big deal. But this right here took a lot of strategic planning. It takes a lot of effort to get to the top of your to the top of your game. Because if I show you what the university looked like in the 50s, they had a vision that they wanted to be here one day. They just didn't know how they were going to get there. And that's the difference in planning and strategic planning. So we can plan all day long, but we need to be thinking about where we want to go, the funding sources to get us there, and what we're actually going to do when we leave this point and get to the top of our, of, of our game. So a planner's job, these are, these are a bunch of, of text on the screen that you may or may not have, may, may or may not have realized that I copied from someone else's slides maybe earlier in the day. But planning is about creating communities. It's about puzzle pieces. It's about fitting those pieces together. It's about looking 10, 15, 20 years in the future. But a strategic plan is, is, is larger. It's where we're talking about action items and goals. And it's how we're actually going to get there and the means of which we're going to do it. And so I'm going to tell some stories today about two small communities and, and, and how we got there. I'm going to talk about the city of Easley. It's a city of 20,000 people. It's investment planning. Uh, and then we'll talk about a town of 880 people and how bicycling can change a small, little, southern community in South Carolina. So bicycle tourism, uh, you can't be sad riding a bicycle. That's one thing I have noticed. I have never seen someone smile driving their SUV going down the road in Atlanta. It just doesn't happen. But you can smile riding a bicycle. Quick story, uh, I have ADD really bad, so I jump all over the place. Quick story, uh, flying to Spokane. Yeah. Everybody's still kind of smart. You'll say it that way by the end of the day. So I, I get to the rental, I, I get to the rental car counter. I say, "Hey, I'm here to pick up my car." They say, "What are you here for?" So I'm here for a bike conference. They say, "That's cool." So we have a four-door Hemi Yukon for you to drive to that bike, <laughs> and they would not give me another bit. They made me drive that big Yukon, so I apologize. For that. Anyway, so, so <laughs> cycling is very, very important. These are all stats that you can pull from the internet. We don't know if they're true or not, but we know that cycling is very, very, very important. We know what tourists want when we think about cycling. You guys have it figured out here. When I start showing you pictures of South Carolina, you'll realize we don't have it figured out yet. But you guys know what, what tourists want. You guys know the scenery. Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, is that how you say that? Blew me out of the water. It's amazingly beautiful here. So you, you guys have figured out the sense of place. You've figured out the atmosphere. You've figured out great streets. And we know that's what's drawing people uh, to these parts. We can show you graphs that make absolutely no sense unless you read all the other pieces of the puzzle to tell you why it's important. But we know that, that bikes increase business. We know it's true because we literally can't spend money inside of a vehicle. You can't. It's, it is, it's absolutely impossible to spend money from inside of your vehicle in your city. But on the bicycle, you have that handlebar perspective. You can step off of that bike, you can walk into that shop, you do not have to worry about where you're going to park at, and you can spend money. And so in my little community of 880 people, when you drive through it and you do not stop, you have not contributed to my economy. 
And when we start talking about strategic planning and how we pay for things, that economy is very, very important. It can save rural communities, and it has done so, and it has done so in rural South Carolina. And if it can do it in rural South Carolina, by God, you can do it anywhere in the country. If we can do it, do it there. So we know we know it's important. We know how, how we're going to get there. We know that, that they've done it in Florida. We know Colorado. We can even go to Alabama and see that it works. But when I start talking to you about easily, Traveler's Rest, I mean, these are small communities in rural South Carolina. And so how have they done it? So it's about investment planning. And so I'm going to talk to you today about the Doodle Trail. It's kind of a weird name. Don't ask how it got it. We have no idea. There was a train that went back and forth, and they said it looked like a doodle bug. And I still have no idea what, what that means. But it's the Doodle Trail. It's in Easley, South Carolina. So before I tell you exactly where South Carolina is, uh, or where Easley is, you don't know where South Carolina is at, you're in, you're in, you're in the wrong room. Uh, so I put a little star where, where, where we are. We're in the upstate of, of South Carolina. I'll show you another map that when the year I was born, we had more Walmarts than you did. And we had them. <laughs> we had almost as many Walmarts as Alabama and Mississippi, but they beat us to the punch. It's important though, because when I start talking about the culture of South Carolina, the culture of why bicycle tourism can save communities, you don't think about it happening somewhere where there's more Walmarts going on. And so it's important to think about other things, maybe like the temperature. So you guys have it figured out up here, 12 inches of snow, 24 inches of snow before you cancel school. We're in the green. Any snow. Any snow. True story, last year we canceled school in the entire upstate because someone said it might snow. So that's where we're at. We're the upstate of, of South Carolina. When I look at brands, I go Starbucks for the for the Northwest. I go Coca-Cola for Atlanta. Even Apple for California. We've got damn Denny's. <laughs> so again, this is that the culture is how we're thinking about things. We're thinking about things totally in left field. We haven't yet started to scratch the surface of what could actually happen again when bicycle tourism starts to take place. So South Carolina as a whole, this is our road map. This thing. This is I-95, this is 26, this is 85. We've got highways cutting through the entire state. If you anybody ever been to South Carolina, just show them hands. Holy smokes! Anybody ever been to West Pelton? <laughs> okay. Nashville. So Anderson. Holy smokes. That's the same county. We're, we're essentially brothers. <laughs> so, 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 we, so we have the uh, Myrtle Beach, Charleston area. That's what most people think of when they think of South Carolina. We've got the Columbia area. That's our capital. It's really hot there. And then we have the upstate, which is amazingly beautiful. So Greenville, South Carolina. It's in the upstate. It's, it's the third largest city. Easily, which I'll be talking about, is right next door. This is nine miles to Traveler's Rest. Nine miles from Pickens to Easley, nine miles from Easley to West Belzer, Clemson. We're all tucked in there right together. So now you know where Easley is at when, we, when, when, I, when I talk about some specific things. But it's important to think about this nine miles and this nine miles. So Easley in relationship to Greenville, we're growing. We've got it figured out. We can have 2.4 kids, we can have an SUV, we can have a pickup truck, we can have a motorcycle, we can have a boat and a camper, and we can still all afford to live within a 15 minute drive of Greenville. And that's why you see these growth patterns taking place in, in different areas. I can talk about the population as a whole, 700,000, 14% of the population lives within, lives within this area. We've got 7% growth since 2010. For the, for the mathematicians, that's the doubling factor of, of every 10 years. So, City of Easley has 20,000 people. At this pace, we will be at 40,000 people in 10 years, and we're we're setting the stage to, to be that way. So we've got to start thinking about mass transit, which doesn't exist in the city of Easley. We've got to start thinking about affordable housing, how that plays into to a to a larger network and a larger system. So the Doodle Trail is 7.5 miles, roughly eight and a half miles now finished between Easley and Pickens. Pickens is a pretty small rural community uh, we're all the we're, this, is, this is all about the textile industry the textile crescent this doodle trail was a spur line went out and back the sole purpose was to go to 
was to go to Pickens, drop off his goods, come back and get on this Norfolk Southern line that runs from uh, Miami to New York. It's, it's, we don't have any stopping points in easily, uh, but that was the purpose of, of this line. And so the Doodle Trail, we did a feasibility study. We knew it had been around for a, for a long time. Uh, we knew that we had we wanted to provide outdoor recreation. We knew that transportation was important. We could take our city council members to Greenville and show them the Swamp Rabbit Trail, which connects to, to Traveler's Rest. We could show them, we could physically take them somewhere and show them what, what they thought they wanted. But a lot of the conversation started when people would say, you know, I went to Hilton Head this weekend and they got 40 miles of pass. And I bought a bicycle and I brought it back to Easley and I realized I couldn't ride it anymore. Or I went hiking this weekend at a state park and then I, I bought me some hiking boots and I came back to Easley, or I came back to West Belgium and I realized I don't have anywhere to hike in the city. And so it started to change the mentality, started to change the way city council members were thinking about the trail system. So we had a, we had a, a, a feasibility study done, we had a bike and pedestrian master plan completed. We stood up in front of 500 people and said, this railroad thing that y'all think y'all own, we're going to build a trail on it. And I had to stand up there while everyone yelled at me, even with a southern accent, they yelled at me for stealing their property and that the crime, crimes were going to go up and that don't you know people deal meth on trails. And I mean, just things that you'd never think that you would hear. They said in that meeting, and we told them, well, we're going to build, we're going to build the trail. The city has purchased it. We purchased it jointly with another city. So not only did, did, we had to, did we had to have the majority whip of whipping three council members to purchase it, we had to think about two different cities. And when both cities vote unanimously to purchase a railroad corridor in rural South Carolina to build a trail, that's a big deal. And that's a game changer for, for small communities. So we had property than you were before. So we had to think about all of those things as we went through uh, the process. <coughs> So what happens when two cities get together and we're going to do a, a joint effort to build it? Well, it's South Carolina. We got to give gold shovels to people and get them in front of everybody and let them let them dig let them let them dig the dirt and flip it over. So we we put them out in front of a railroad car in the city of Pickens and right before Mayor uh, Mayor Bagwell on the right, that's Mayor Owens on the on the left, said, "Well, you guys think y'all can get it done by maybe Memorial Day?" Jesus, that's, that's like 110, 110 days, 115 days. Sure, we can do it. Why, why not? Uh, so they announced then that it would be ready by Memorial Day. <laughs> Which, that's a, that's a big deal when you're building eight, eight miles of trail through. And this is what we were starting with. We were starting with crossings that hadn't been removed. We were starting with, with ties that were, still in, that were still in place. We were dealing with abandoned buildings. We were dealing with old mills that were still there. We were dealing with a lot of issues internally. On top of when we broke ground, we didn't have a permit to construct yet. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit later, we had the government helping us there. But we, had, we had stormwater issues. We had bridge issues. We had road issues. I mean, we had some serious, serious constraints uh, overwhelming us at, at the moment. We started removing the ties and, and being able to go from the image on the left to the image on the right. And that was a game changer because then it became real. It became real to people that this is really going to happen. And the things that we see in the Pacific Northwest or the things that we see at Hilton Head, South Carolina, or the trails that we see connecting Atlanta to Alabama, it's going to happen in little old easily. And we're going to have hundreds of thousands of people using this trail. This is when that reality started to set in, that the community had been transformed. We started pushing dirt and realized that if you have a railroad bed that has not seen water in a hundred years and it rains, it acts like a sponge. And you can't get the water out. And then we have mayors telling us, well, it's going to be ready by Memorial Day. <laughs> and they're all smiling. We're going to do it. It's going to be great. <laughs> So you, to go from that image on the left to the image on the right is a, it was a, that's a game changer for me at the time as, a, as a, a private consultant and landscape architect to be able to make that happen. So that was a game, that was a life changing experience for me to stay up at night and try to figure out, please God, let it stop raining just for a few days so that we can, so that we can build this trail. And then we had property owners along the way that would say, well, since you got that big dozer out here, can you just peel back that bank just a little bit? So every Friday, I would go and meet with property owners that we, that we would be impacting the next week. 
And I'd say, Miss Susie, you know we're coming through here with those tractors. If you want that tree removed, you need to tell me now. <laughs> She'd wink at me and say, okay, son, well, you'll just go ahead and take that tree now. And, but those people became my best friends during that time because they knew that the skinny guy with the mustache, see him, he'll help you out. He'll walk you through the process that we're going to go through to get this trail built. So again, when they, when they saw me out there explaining to them, look, we're just building the trail. We're not going to tear. We're not going to tear up your yard, your driveway. It became a little more palatable uh, for them for them to get there. We had folks telling us that that there was a pipe here when they built that house in 1959. They knew it had to be there, and when we dug it up, there was no pipe there. So then we all of a sudden we had to fix a stormwater problem that didn't exist. Uh, we had to fix all of the railroad crossings, 17 DOT railroad crossings. Um, this is recorded, you may want to cut this section out of it. Uh, so, we, so we meet with DOT and we tell them we're going to submit an encroachment permit to cut up all the roads and they said that's, that's great. They never responded back to us. So we just, we just built it, so SCDOT, we apologize but we are grateful that you allowed us to, to build this trail across all of those streets. Uh, 17 total I think it was, but it worked out. It worked out. Uh, so, so we're building the trail, we're getting to that finishing stage, we've, we've got a contractor out of, out of Florida that is building the bridge for us. I was in Myrtle Beach at a conference, the phone rings at, at 5 a.m. This contractor said, you ain't going to believe this yet, man. The bridge burnt last night. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me. Like, you can't even make this kind of stuff, stuff up. So, uh, you know, turn off your welding torches when you're building bridges, uh, and you won't burn them down at night. Uh, but it, it worked out. We figured out how to do it. We figured out how to make it work. We figured out how to scab together and, uh, some piles. We figured if it would support a railroad, the structural engineer assured us it would support a wooden bridge and people. And so we were able to, to get a little bit closer to, to hitting that. Uh, we had to start putting up signs because the people started using it. It's a good problem to have. But then uh, it rained a lot in springtime in South Carolina and uh, not as, quite as much as it does here. But uh, it rains a lot and so the contractor said, like, I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to finish. I said, well, you know, I didn't stutter. We're, we're going we're gonna to finish this trail. And so we started mixing in Portland cement into the base as we would go through and, and grind up or remove some of the gravel so that when it did rain, it became hard as a rock. It became just like cement so that we could pave right back on top of it. That was a cost that the contractor did on his own because he wanted to make sure that we got the project finished. He knew that if we got it finished, that he had a better chance of getting phase two, bringing it into downtown. That's commitment. That's a local contractor from Easley, South Carolina, building a greenway in Easley. So when we talk about keeping it local, keeping it local can, can, can definitely pay off. And it worked. We built it. We finished it. I have no idea how on God's green earth we finished that trail in 100 days, but we did it. Um, it's, it has amazing use. Uh, right now about 325,000 people a year. Big deal for a city of 20,000 people. Big deal when Greenville, just to the north of us, have, has 20 miles of trail and they have about 502,000 people a year. So between the two, we've got 800,000 trips happening. And so that starts to transform how people think in West Pelzer about trails all of a sudden when you see everyone around you leaving and driving to another city with the bike on the back of their car and use it. And that's, that's when it starts to transform some of the smaller communities. So we hit the ribbon cut, as with Southern tradition on everything, we will have a beauty queen uh, at the ribbon cutting. Uh, we, we, uh, we didn't know if there was going to be 50 people come to the, to the ribbon cutting or 500. We had a few thousand show up. We had people from seven states there within the first week using the trail. It was it's not because we, we advertised it. it was, we didn't know how to advertise. We just built a trail and figured people would, would figure it out. Um, and luckily they, they did. Uh, we had the Boy Scouts starting to use it. We had, we had folks that hadn't been on bikes in years, and, I, and I, I've got a thousand stories of this. One is the Arby's and Pickens had to put a bike rack out because so many people wanted <laughs> roast beef sandwiches after they rode the eight miles. <laughs> uh, but we also had the Walmart in Easley and Pickens. That's my Walmart wraparound. So Walmart had to start carrying more bicycles because people were saying, I haven't owned a bike since I was 13 or 14 years old, and I guess i got to go get one. Where do I go? Walmart. That's brilliant marketing, by the way. Walmart. So Walmart had to start carrying more and more bikes in both communities.
community. That's a game changer. That's an economic, that's an economic impact. Uh, we had bike stores open up. We had group rides starting to happen. Again, this is a community that's very auto-centric. We have Highway 123 that goes directly to Easley. We bleed out 8,000 cars, 8,000 people a day from our city that work in Greenville. We're a driving community. And so to get those people to stay there, to get them to ride their bikes, again, a game changer. Where the trail ends, the mayor said, well, let's, let's build a park at the end of it, because that's what you're supposed to do, right? you got to have a park at the end, somewhere to park your car at. So, uh, we, uh, we, I, if you don't smile during this presentation, you don't have a so, so, believe it or not, uh, ARC gave a grant, a one-to-one -one match grant for $500,000, so a $250,000 match to, to build a park. And this is another one of those things where the mayor was like, well, we're going to build it, we're going to do it, and I'm going to have the trains in it, and well, Blake, that's the drawing you did first, so I imagine that's, that's what it's going to look like, right? So there's no deviation from, from these things. So we literally built it exactly like the drawing was. But again, that's local involvement. I was, I was a private consultant living in the city, working in the city, wanting to see the changes happening. And so you make sure that those little things that city council members are telling you or the mayor is telling you, you make sure those things are implemented because when he cuts the ribbon on that, that's when he'll smile the largest and when he sees people using it. That's when, that's when he'll smile the largest. That's when the, that's when the economic impact is starting to take place. When you see people that, he'll say, I didn't recognize anybody on the trail today. That's a, that's a good problem to have, Mayor. We want more people from the outside coming here. We want the pump tracks to get built, like, like was built in, in Pickens on the north side. We want these crazy ramps that are that, that nobody's ever seen or heard of in small town Pickens. What's a pump track? You mean we don't have to ride just on the asphalt? There's another place we can go and ride after this? So again, it started expanding. It started getting larger than it was. You all are well aware of beer, but beer and bikes go very well together. Uh, so we started having craft brew houses open up, Appalachian Ale House opened up, and said we've got to put bike racks out front. It, again, it's, it's game-changing things that happen. So then the mayor said, well, the, the trail's about a mile from downtown. And we had put up signs directing people on low traffic roads to our sidewalks to get into the city. But we knew that we needed to build kind of a different piece to get there. We knew that we needed to acquire some property. So the city acquired about five acres, decided to tear down all the rental homes that were there that were literally falling apart. Some didn't have doors on them and build affordable housing. And so this project is under construction now for 20, 20 affordable homes based on the 80% uh, average median income for the area. So these are the firefighters, the nurses, the teachers that are living here. Every home backs up to the Doodle Trail extension into downtown. So it's important to, to, to tell you though that the Greenway actually stops here. The city didn't have any more right of way to go. We, we didn't know how we were going to, what we were going to do the rest of the way, but we knew that we had a street that ran through a cemetery it had very low traffic volumes on it. <laughs> well, got that. That was a good one. Uh, all right.